Hello everyone, Funshine X here. Welcome to my brand new Let's Play of Space Engineers. We're gonna give this game a shot. I know a lot of you've been waiting for it or asking for it, and I'll, I'll give it a try, see how it is. I've played it off and on for the last uh, year or so, just bits and pieces. I've never really got into it much, um, but they've uh, made some updates to the game that have made it quite exciting, so I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, Space Engineers is a voxel-based voxel -based survival game, uh, similar to some of the other games I play on my channel. And uh, this one's been, it's in beta still, but it's been around a lot more than the other space game I play, which is still in alpha. So uh, it's got a lot more features. It's got a lot more automation. You know I love automation. It's also got mods. Yay. <laughs> so let's give it a try. Um, we'll see how we do. Um, I'll probably return to Imperion, uh, you know, in, in the near future once it has more features to test and play around with. It's getting a little old, you know, having to restart every three episodes because they add new features that break worlds or or add new features you only get in a new world, that kind of thing. So here we go, Space Engineers New World, we're gonna pick custom. There's a bunch of custom ones you can pick from. I'm going with the asteroids, it seems like the thing to do on YouTube. So we'll call this Funshine X, plays. Uh, no, let's call it Funshine X is, when I survives, how's that? Won't just be plays, but I survive. <laughs> and this is called my let's play for you tuba there we go so i think i can save this world out to the steam workshop so if i ever make a cool build then you guys can download it and that kind of thing be offline it'll be uh in survival we'll do safe for now i am a newbie care bear so i'll just keep it safe no hostile asteroids crashing into me uh the old way to play you had just like a few asteroids and so it got boring after a while uh, the new one is infinite, meaning it's it's like, uh, you know, as you explore, more things come. Uh, low density, which is the, I think the default, <laughs> the asteroids are so spread out, it can take like five minutes to travel between them. That doesn't seem fun at all. Normal, that's okay. Usually it's about one to two minutes to travel, and high density, they're just everywhere. I'm going to play high density because we want to have fun. We don't want to spend time traveling. Uh, turning auto save off because it lags me out and I don't want to do that. I'll just save in between episodes. Um, we're not creating a scenario. As far as mods, um, I don't know a lot about the mods that are available. Fortunately, there is someone that does, and he's created a mod pack. Yeah, that's right, Direwolf20 has created a mod pack for Space Engineers that you can go to Steam Workshop and download. Just type in Direwolf20, subscribe to his pack, and it will download all the mods, and all you have to do is hit this button right there. Bam, installed mods. Isn't that awesome? Um, I don't really know much about all of these, so I'll probably, you know, as I need them or see something cool, I'll research it and tell you guys about it, but I gotta have mods. <laughs> and there's a bunch of advanced settings we're gonna do. Um, I really like that Space Engineers put this in. It's, um, Imperion has a thing where they're still trying to balance and configure things and that kind of thing, and they tend to go way overpowered and then nerf it way back till it's impossible and then try and find a medium why not just give users options you know so that you can pick and choose them and enjoy the game your way and that's what space engineers does so we're going to pick in survival mode um and you got configuration settings on all your sizes and timings inventory size if you do realistic you're going to be traveling back and forth between your your space your boxes whatever your storage inventories like four or five times for every single component on your ship. <laughs> I don't like doing that. That's just a waste of time and boring. Times 10, you can hold, you know, like a whole meteor in your backpack, basically. Not not really, but it's, it's a little obscene. So I'm going to go happy medium with times three. Similar efficiency. I was thinking about raising that up because this just makes it basically I have to mine more to get my ingots, which is no fun. But there are a few mods that make assemblers more efficient and also just some vanilla stuff that, add, that you know the upgrades to it so if i put it at times 10 there's really no need or no reason for me to ever explore those efficiency upgrades so i think we're going to leave that actually on realistic uh we'll see if that bites me in the butt later refinery speed i think the same thing we can explore you know better refineries improved refineries that kind of thing if we leave it on realistic Welding speed and grinding speed. In this game, when you want to build something or destroy something, you have to weld or grind it. And it takes a long time. <laughs> and so that seems a little bit, uh, you know, just adding difficulty by adding time, which you guys all know I don't like. That's boring content for YouTube. Um, so I'm going to put those both at times two and times two. 
if you put them at times five and five, that you know, I could go up to a ship and just harvest the whole thing, you know, instantly. <laughs> well, it's just super quick. So I want it. I want a little bit of effort required to say, you know, do I really want to go spend time doing that or not? But I don't want it to take hours to go take apart a ship. So that's why we're doing times two times two. Everything else will leave pretty much on default except for day duration. I just want the day to last forever. So I'm putting it up to a day. Auto healing sounds good. Um, anything else I want? I don't want trash auto removal. I played this game in test. I dropped something on the ground. It floated away like 20 meters and disappeared. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess it's gone. Uh, so that's, we're gonna leave that unchecked. It might cause a little bit of extra memory use in my game if I, you know, things go flying off into oblivion a million miles away, but that's fine. Uh, oxygen, yes, we want. Respawn ships, that's if you die, you can spawn back in a ship. Doesn't really matter to me. I'm not gonna die, right? This is called Function X Survives. Um, all those are good. I want to uncheck permanent death. That just basically means if you die and there's no medical respawn room, your world is gone, and I don't want that. And station voxel support. This basically means if you check it, then a station is a station. It's attached to an asteroid. It doesn't move ever. Um, if you uncheck it, then stations are pretty much just large ships. They can move around and all that kind of stuff. So I'd rather have a difference between the large ship and the station. And we'll hit OK there. So let's hit OK, create the world. And let's talk about what my plans are. Um, my plans are to definitely get into the mods as much as possible. And I'll try and explain, you know, the difference. This is vanilla. This is a mod item, that kind of thing, why we're using it. I also want to get into the programming. Uh, as far as I know, this game has quite a few programming blocks some are vanilla some are modded um so i think we want to get into it and then explore that since a lot of you have subscribed you know from old computer craft tutorials and that kind of thing so uh, maybe you're interested in seeing that um and other than that we just want to build big destroy entire asteroids at once you know just mine them mine the heck out of them um, and then we might want to have a crash test area where we build a ship and just crashed it if you watch the uh background screen when you first load the game it's just like crash reels over and over of ships crashing into each other and i think they were actually pretty exciting looking so we might do that as well all right so we start out in a world you can see there's an asteroid in front of us that's pretty generic you'll always have a big asteroid right in front of you pretty much uh, and then some smaller asteroids around it and since i have it on uh, dense generation these asteroids are all pretty close you know within a, a minute or two of travel distance so whatever or I need I should be able to find it okay all right where's that big asteroid again uh oh I lost it there it is <laughs> it's it gets a little tricky finding finding things so let's go ahead and drive over here um, note on this game it has uh, real physics supposedly um, so that when you speed up you just keep going and going and going to the crash unless you push z and that puts the inertial dampeners on that basically normalizes your momentum to whatever direction you're pushing so if i'm f pushing to the right and then i start turning you know it, it will stop me and slow me down and all this stuff um, if i turn them off i just kind of float in the same direction as whatever i thrusted so that's it, yeah, it's pretty cool i like this concept of the inertial dampeners Let's go ahead and just fly on over to this thing. This ship is pretty weak because it, it starts off pretty damaged. So if you hit this thing, things explode, things start flying off. So you got to be careful. One easy way is to just hit V so you can actually see what the heck you're doing. So let's get kind of close. I don't want to get too close, but I don't want to have to travel too far. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this thing and then park it just in the shadow of this asteroid. Nice. Okay, that's a good thing. And well, dampeners are on, so it should just remain here unless something runs into it. We can hit uh, V to go back to first person, T to come out of the cockpit, and we're on the ship, which has gravity thanks to this gravity block here, gravity generator. And uh, this just creates a field kind of in a spherical area around the ship, I think, to, uh, to make gravity. Um, if I walked out the door, I would just fall off into space, which is kind of a weird concept, but gravity generation is all is science fiction anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so we can look at myself. You can see I'm just a gray spaceman, so let's change that. Let's go into this little closet here, hit T, and we can change our color. Um, there's a no helmet that will kill you because you need a helmet, right? Uh, and I think there might be some other models to download to replace this guy. I'm not sure, certain on that, but I think there are. So let's make ourselves a nice yellow here. That looks good. Matches my Minecraft skin. Hit OK, and now we're we're a yellow, funshine spaceman. 
Uh, this block here is a medic station. If you hold down T, it refills your health, it uh, refills your energy from the ship, and also if you have an oxygen creator on the ship, it'll replace your oxygen as one. So you get three and one if you just hold down T, which is really cool. Uh, what else is on the ship? We've got a refinery. This is responsible um, for uh, smelting all our ores into ingots. Uh, you hit K on any of these yellow boxes to open up their inventory. You can see it has an input inventory and an output inventory. These have a very large inventory because we've multiplied everything by three. Is that we selected 3x? Yeah. You can see I also have a volume limit. The mass is unlimited as long as it fits within the volume. Um, but that causes you, I think, to move a little bit slower. You're kind of encumbered. Maybe you lose more energy when you're on your jetpack, that kind of thing. So you don't want to get your mass too high, but that, that's really not your limit. It's this 1,200 liters or 400 liters if you play realistic. And that's good there. Um, you can see that we can access pretty much everything on the ship. There's a cargo container that has some extra stuff here. I'm going to put this gun away because there's no aliens in the game yet. If I don't know if they're planning on adding them or not. But having a gun, there's no purpose unless you're playing multiplayer, maybe. Um, the assembler has an input here of, of your ingots that you want to use to craft stuff. And to do that, you go into the production tab, and here's all the stuff you can craft and what it, materials it costs. It's got a queue, just similar to all the games you've played, um, that kind of thing. Um, control panel, this, basically, you can control everything on your ship. So you can turn it off, turn it on. There's Each one has some custom settings to do it based on the type it is. Um, you can hide things in here. I'll show that probably more later. Um, info just gives you some generic information. Well, not generic, detailed information about your ship. You know, how big it is, what it's contained uh, in, that kind of stuff. If you want to show some, you know, like debug information, like where's the center, where's the gravity effect, um, how big is the antenna, that kind of thing, you can do that. Factions is for PvP. Comms is for multiplayer servers. And GPS is pretty good. Let's go ahead and do a new from current position and we'll rename it starter ship. And that will now be a nice uh, waypoint here in case I ever fly off, I can always get back to this point. Okay, this light is really weird. It turns off and on based on you're looking at it and I don't want that. So I'm gonna get rid of it. So hook G, that's gonna bring up this thing. If I go to character tools, uh, right click on all these to get rid of them, I don't need them. Uh, we'll go ahead and add a welder, a grinder, and a hand drill. A hand drill, excuse me. And then we can just go ahead and grind. Let's hit uh, X to enable our jetpack. Fly up here and grind this light off. There we go. Light is gone. Put a X to jetpack off. Um, Z is those dampeners on and off. Um, what other keys are important? T is used to access anything. So open this door, T. Speaking of doors, I don't need a door. I'm not going to keep this place oxygen sealed, so might as well get rid of it and take the stuff inside. Yeah, give me that stuff. You can see down in the bottom left, I've got a bunch of readouts on status. One of them is my volume. Right now it's at 200. I know that I can go to 1200, so I'm good. If I do hit my limit, it'll turn red and things will start flying off into space. So make sure you never go above your volume limit when you do that. Well, our ship seems to be shaken. That's weird. <laughs> okay, so by grinding, I've gained a few th items in my inventory, and that's good. Um, let's go ahead and fly out here, um, if I can. Let's jetpack, there we go. All right, so what else is on the ship? We've got some thrusters. Every direction has a thruster, so it can move around. Those are responsible for thrust in all six directions. If it actually wants to turn, it needs a gyroscope. Um, you can actually turn your ship without thrusters. It just spins with this guy. There is, um, here's the oxygen generator. So in here it has ice. You just pull out one of the bottles, keep it in your inventory, and it'll refill your oxygen whenever it gets low. And then you just put the empty bottles back in here. It'll process some of the ice to fill it back up. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is our refinery. I already showed that inventory. Um, and then over here, we've got our nuclear reactor. This runs off uranium, so that's a very critical resource. I'm going to head and right click drag some uranium over here and just get like 0.5 of it. And I'm gonna keep that in reserve and not put it in the reactor, so I'll put it in this small cargo container. Actually, is that, <laughs> it just put, okay, never mind. I put it over in the reactor. Oh well, we should be fine. I just never wanna run out because if I run out and I go get some more uranium ore, I can't turn it into ingots. You know, there's no way. So I, I need to make sure I always have a surplus in here or I'm in big trouble. What's that noise? 
I don't know. Okay. There's a weird noise going on. <laughs> All right. And then, um, so that's nuclear reactor. This here is a, um, like a collector. So if things fly near this, it kind of like scoops them up. I don't really need that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. Keep watching my volume. We don't want to hit 1200. Yeah, we're good. All right. And you can see we have access to our assembler. So that would have, anything we threw at the ship would have just been dumped into the assembler automatically. Um, as far as mining goes, um, you can see if we get close and have our hand drill, we get close to this ore, it'll tell us what it is sometimes, maybe. There it is. It's telling us it's iron. Okay. It's actually very difficult to tell sometimes the difference between the ores. Iron and nickel look almost identical. There's subtle differences. This one, iron has like these red tones in it where, and yellow tones where nickel is almost all just tan. Um, but there's ways, better ways of finding ores, and that's putting an ore detector on your ship. And that's the first thing I'm actually going to do. So let's find what's the top of our ship right here. I'm going to go ahead and grind this block off here. And that block as well. We're still under a limit. We're good. All right. Then I'm going to hit that G key again. And this time I'm going to use the search tool and search for ore. You can see there's a basic one that comes with the game. There's also some ones that come from mods. I just want the basic one because it's pretty cheap. And I'm going to go ahead and try and rotate this thing. I've got it used to the rotation keys because they are completely different than uh, Imperion. And we'll put it right there. And you can see... I didn't have to have all the stuff to make it, to place it. Um, I just needed, I think, one steel plate in my inventory to place it. But it just created an outline for me. Now I need to actually weld this thing. So I go up close, and I left click, and it's going to put in the, the components and start welding them in to the box. And it's going to take a while, but remember we increased our rate. So this is actually twice as fast, or three times as fast as normal. <laughs> And you can see it's placed the seal plates, construction components, it's placed the motors, and it says, oh, you don't have enough computers. We need 13 computers. Uh, you can also see we are short on detector components, 25 of those. So let's go see what that's going to take to make so we can finish that off. Where's my door? I think it's up here. My lack of my door, my entryway, I'll call it. Um, I'm actually upside down. If we hit X, it should spin us around. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so if we go to the assembler, or re refinery, um, I think we could do it from any control, actually. Let's hit, yeah, if we get hit K, we can actually get to anything. So this, you know, production tab right here. Any terminal will access this. Um, we need to make computers. I think it was like 13. Hit uh, um, left click to do one, uh, control click to do 10 and shift click to do 100. So there's our 13 computers. They're red because we do not have the iron and silicon required to make them. Uh, the other thing we needed was detector blocks, which are these ones. And we needed 25 of these. All right, and we need also need iron and nickel for those. So it was iron, nickel, and silicon is the first things we're gonna have to mine to get that detector block. All right. Yeah, so it just so happens this entire asteroid is made of iron, so this sh should be a piece of cake. We'll just go ahead and drill. And you notice when you... Oops, that's not a drill. This is the drill. When you drill, the stuff just kind of flies out into space. You have to hit T to collect it, and that weighed a lot. You can see it filled up our volume quite a bit. So we don't need to drill that much out of here to be full. We're at... Uh, we're getting pretty close. You can kind of like spam T as you're drilling. Oh, see, that one got shot way out. <laughs> eh, 10, 12, we can probably get one more. Whoa, we kind of went through the world there. All right, that was the max. We've hit our max there. We'll go ahead and go stick this right in the refinery. Um, I guess I can access it from any inventory here. Uh, and refinery right there. There we go. The only reason I can access other inventories from any inventory is because of this network of tubes and conveyors. So these are the normal tubes. They have an input and an output, and there's a, a straight and a curve, so you can route them anywhere. If you want to connect multiple inventories in more than two, then you need this conveyor block, which is kind of like a junction block. It'll you know, allow you to send tubes off of all of it. And so that's connecting the ice and the nuclear reactor and the assembler, and the assembler's connected to the um, refinery and all that kind of stuff. So it's all talking to each other, and I think this connects the uh, storage compartment. 
So that allows me on my ship to talk. Won't really worry about that now, but when we're building a space station, we'll need to know that for sure. All right, so we got our iron. We need to find some silicon and some nickel. I'm gonna head to this planet here, or this uh, guy here. Let's make sure we have dampeners off as we travel. And as you get close, dampeners on, or you will smack into it and die. All right, so what is this material here? This is nickel, perfect. You can see nickel, you know, it's more of a brown uniform color. That's how you can tell the difference. So mine and hit T. Okay. Oh, I don't know where that one went. I guess it's not going anywhere. Oh, there it goes. Got it. <laughs> oh, and I can do is hit L, and that gives a personal light so I can see. That's pretty cool. Oh, that one's going flying out. There we go. All right, so we full? Not quite. Let's get a little bit more. Nickel's pretty important. <laughs> I like this little mini game. It's like pull and then shoot it, right? All right. We got the, uh, the nickel ore completely full. Head back to our ship. We've got our nice little uh, waypoint here. So we've got that. Good. And there we go. So again, we'll put this into our refinery. Okay. It's done with our iron. That's awesome. So we put the nickel in there. There's our nickel. All right. Last thing was silicon. Silicon is kind of like a dark gray. It's very uniform in color. Um, this is a little black. I think this is going to be um, uranium. Yes, it is. Sweet. I like having a good supply of uranium close by. Oh, I don't want to lose it, though. Even though there's like a ton on this rock. It'll last me quite a while. As I get a bigger ship and a bigger base, it'll go. I'll go through it a lot faster. Okay. All right, that should be enough uranium for now. Let's keep looking for that uh, nickel. What's this? This is, what, cobalt maybe? Or is this just stone? I think this is just stone. Stone has a number of different colors, so we kind of have to get used to finding it all. But we've got the, this is kind of like the gray red iron. You can see it's got red and gray. This is like the orange iron. So iron also has two colors. This orange, red, and yellow iron. Um, we've got some ice here. So if we need to get more ice for our uh, oxygen packs, we can get it here. And it's got some magnesium as well. Nice. I think that's used for weapons. Maybe. And then what do we got here? This blue stuff. This is more ice or is this cobalt? You can see why I need, oh, there's more magnesium. Why I need an order at Hector because I hate having to <laughs> travel so close to find this stuff. All right, what's this? Oh, is this silicon here? Platinum. Oh my goodness. I am rich. This whole asteroid is made out of platinum. <laughs> or this whole side of it anyway. Wow, I think this might just be stone. You can't tell until you get really close. If you're really unsure, just drill a little bit and pick it up, and then you'll be fine. All right, so my main asteroid is iron and platinum, and then I've got pretty much everything around it but silicon. Is this still platinum or is this silicon? Platinum, I think plat, they're both gray, but platinum is definitely a lot shinier. So we're good there. How's our energy oxygen? About 40%, so we don't want to travel too far or we'll have trouble making it back. So let's go check in some more of these close ones that I haven't checked yet. Here's another one here. This one's got uh, stone here, probably. Nope, that's cobalt. Okay, cobalt's good to have. More uranium, more iron. Nice. Okay. And what you can do is you hit inventory and just add a GPS location. You can kind of mark each asteroid so you know what's in it. So let's do that now. This one is cobalt, iron. Yeah, I thought there was something else in here. On oh, uranium. Okay, cobalt, iron, and uranium. Anything else? No. So I, GPS, uh, new from current position. Cobalt, iron, uranium. There we go. And we can always hide it if we don't want to see it. And then whenever we need to find uranium, we'll just go like this and go GPS and, oh, uranium, so let's show it. And then we could fly right to it. So pretty cool. Um, I'm going to leave them actually all turned on right now just so I can see which, oops, see which ones I've visited. Perfect. 
Okay, well, I think we need to refresh our energy just in case. Well, let's check these. These are the ones I did check, right? There's more uranium there. More ice. This is the pink iron. What's this? Just stone. Okay. So this was just all iron and uranium, and this was nickel, right? Yeah. All right, so we'll mark that on the map as well, kind of both of these at once. And this was iron, nickel, uranium. Okay. Let's go back to our ship and recharge, and then we'll go check out a few more asteroids looking for the elusive silicon. I know a lot of people have trouble in their worlds, either with, with, with nickel or with silicon. We found the nickel, so that's good. Hopefully we can get uh, the uh, silicon quickly as well. So that's not the side my door's on. All right, head inside. Two ways we can refill fill our energy. Oh, get inside here. We can jump inside the, uh, or hit T on the medical thing, or just sit in our captain's chair, and that actually refills your energy. There we go. And it, But it's not filling my oxygen up. So that's one kind of negative. It also won't heal me, other than the just generic heal over time that we know we have. Okay, so we might need to travel a little bit further. So let's use the ship here and try and find some close asteroids. I like the shape of this one. It's like a, tor uh, a ring, a torus, is that what they're called? No, I don't remember what they're called. Uh, remember to turn your dampeners off to consume energy. See, I'm up at 67 meters. I'm not hitting forward anymore. I'm just kind of floating at this speed. Uh, but do be careful that you don't get too close to this or you will uh, run right into it and crash. I've done that before, believe me. This one actually looks like it's closer. We can go that one on the way back. I'm looking for kind of a, a gray flat material. When I say flat, I mean like the sheen, the bright, you know, like the reflection. I want to get this ore detector done. Come on, dude. This is a very, very large asteroid. Very far away. A lot farther than I thought it would be. Wow. And it's got a bunch of, I might, yeah, I might call this my home. You can see I can float towards it, but I can still turn, and I'm still traveling the same speed. So I really like the the, the mechanics in this game of the the physics. All right, well, <laughs> yeah, this thing. Oh, this is beautiful. It's it definitely has a donut, but the inside it, it's got like a bumpy asteroid. I found ones that look like brains, ones that look like geodes, ones that are all like pointy, like a urchin, and and ones that look like donuts. But this one looks like a mix of a few, and it looks like it's all stone. <laughs> I don't even see a single ore on it. All right, okay, then they're they're just they're appearing now. Oh, this might be what I'm looking for. Oh, this is a brain one, inside a donut one. All right. Let's park right here. Wait till it stops. We can get out. And we'll go ahead and fly over here and see what this is made of. Is this more platinum? Holy crap. I am never going to be running out of platinum. I can tell you that much. This all is platinum. Wow. All right. You see the notice just said oxygen filled from bottles. How much did that use? That used almost a half a tank of oxygen to refill me. So I think that ox one oxygen tank will fill you up twice. Yeah. <laughs> this, these are so weird looking. They're almost creepy, the, the patterns in them. Yeah, but this just looks like an iron and plat. Excuse me, platinum. Oh, there's a little bit of gold in there too. And a little bit of uranium, huh? Wow, this is a nice asteroid. Very nice asteroid. So let's go put a coordinate in here and we'll go GPS new call this one iron platinum gold and uranium and we'll put exclamation marks there because we really like it <laughs> i mean there's lots of it it's a big one now if i can find my ship oh and see we got a tunnel should we fly through this tunnel let's see if we can fly through without dying Yeehaw. nice 
<laughs> oh, it didn't take any damage. I bumped the wall, but didn't take damage, so all good. I mean, where the heck is my ship? There it is. <laughs> Hazards of parking your ship too close to the asteroid is it can get hidden. We can add a uh, like a, a beacon to our ship so that we can see it from far away. We'll definitely do that once we actually build a ship worth keeping. All right, back on, there we go. Okay, so back towards where we started, we, we found, that was it this one or this one that was really close? Let's just head in, head in between them. Again, your maximum speed's like 110, so just get up to like 100 and then just stop pressing forward, turn your dampeners off and float. You can see my power uses, I'm using 4%. It'll last, how long is it gonna last? Two hours. Right now, I could I could float like this basically for two hours. If I start turning and using my thrusters, then obviously it's going to be less. All right, so maybe it's one of these two guys that was in between. Let's put a little bit of left thrust traction here. All right, coming in. If you notice you're going the wrong way, just turn your dampeners on and then hit forward right towards it and then turn them off again. Easiest way to adjust your direction you're heading. Okay, maybe these weren't as uh, close as I thought. Very difficult to judge distance in this game. <laughs> they need to have like a scan. Oh, that's getting close. A lot closer than I thought it was. Um, a scanner where you can like aim at a thing and it'll tell you, this is about 1,000 meters away or 20,000 meters away. All right, yeah, this is the urchin one, I call it. Cause, or the, well, it might be a geode. It's kind of bumpy. I've seen one that's a lot more sharp. This one is gold, iron. Oh, no, no, oh, no. I didn't know I was that close. Ah, uh, that was bad. That was really bad. I think I've lost a thruster. Ah, uh, shoot. All right, let's get out of here. What's our... Oh my goodness, I blew up in the whole front of the ship. There went my ore detector. <laughs> awesome! <sighs> and I didn't find what I was looking for. No silicon. Alright, well, I'm gonna definitely- is that all I lost was just the, uh, the ore detector? I th think we lost a thruster on this side as well. You can see what I mean about distance. I thought this thing was like still far away from me, but nope, it was right there. Cool. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. I'll go ahead and try and repair the ship. It's obviously just come back here and start clicking on stuff and repairs it. Uh, puts it back into shape. I like how it bends it out of <laughs> all, all, all whack. It makes crashes a lot more cooler. And I was going to remove the top out of this thing anyway. It was about to become a Cadillac. I just was upset that it took out my ore detector that was almost done. Bummer. Yeah. All right. Well, if you like this episode, if you like watching me crash, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Let's Play Space Engineers. Catch you guys later. Bye.